Hey, it's Dr. Charles, a.k.a. Coach MD. In my over 30 years of medical practice, I've made it my goal to help you create a great life by achieving a strong mind, a healthy body, and an unshakable spirit. What I want to talk to you today about is this article, A Positive Psychiatrist, Four Tips to Ease Everyday Stress. One may surprise you. Now, uh, you know, I talk a lot about this, a lot about stress, and uh, some people say, well, you know, just talk to me about the medical stuff. Well, in my, like I said, over 30 years of medical practice, I've learned that our challenges of everyday life affect our health greatly. And in fact, many, if not most, of physical ailments stem from our ability to balance the challenges of everyday life and to understand ourselves and what gets us anxious. And that's what really started me on my quest uh, about 10 to 12 years ago in my writing about this and, and my writing Brain Drain. So let's take a look at this article. With our days becoming more and more demanding, carving out micro moments of self-care can be challenging. Here's a friendly reminder to hit pause, take a step back, and recenter yourself. This episode was created in partnership with Smartwater. Smartwater Plus, a brand new line from Smartwater, was created specifically for moments like these. So sit back, take a sip, and take that moment of clarity for yourself. So that's a, a little bit of a promotion prior to going over this. The toll of everyday stress, we don't really address it enough in my profession, says positive psychiatrist Samantha Boardman, MD author of Everyday Vitality on this episode of the Mind Body Green podcast. Considering her profession is, well, psychiatry, this may seem puzzling. However, she notes that while we do have the ability to bounce back from major life stressors, divorce, death, etc., those micro stressors tend to fly under the radar. You may not even notice them until they snowball into pretty intense mental and physical symptoms. And that's why I'm interested in this, right? As an internist for over 30 years, people come into, came in to see me because of physical ailments. Well, I always like to see, well, what's really going on? What changed in your life in the last, let's say, 60, 90 Six months, 90 days, six months, one year, there's usually something that triggers an acute physical ailment. Not always, but a lot of the time. We have this big R resilience for the big stuff that happens, but we're lacking that little R resilience for the daily grind, she continues. That said, she offers her top tips for managing everyday stress, and you may be surprised by a couple of her go-tos. Getting outdoors. Now, I'm not surprised by this because this helps me a lot. It's a tip you might have heard once or twice before. Nature is a well-researched buffer that helps people cope better with life stressors. Boardman wholeheartedly agrees, and I, I do as well. One of the best things about being outdoors is it interrupts rumination, she says. You know, that downward spiral filled with statements like, why did I do that? Or why did I say that? How stupid am I? When we get out of rumination, one of the best strategies is being outside because all you have is nature. Nature doesn't care about your, your stress. Nature just is. It just exists. The birds are chirping. They don't know your stress. Just listen to those birds. Listen to the, 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 the water flowing or the breeze against your face. In fact, studies have shown that peering at wide distances, like at a landscape or up into the sky, and can actually activate the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system is the relaxation nervous system. And it also stimulates what's called the vagus nerve, which, which helps us relax. So it's kind of like a relaxation response. It also can help release normal levels of dopamine or GABA. And those are do dopamine is that pleasure neurotransmitter that I've talked about in other, uh, other episodes here. And it's also GABA is the relaxation hormone, which many of the uh, tranquilizers try to stimulate the body to produce that. It's the complete opposite of tunnel vision where your tunnel uh, where your tunnel pupils dilate in response to adrenaline and prepare you for fight or flight. Looking out into the distance in nature can help you feel more at ease. 
And on a physical note, we also know from research that patients who have a window onto nature recover more quickly from surgery. They require less pain medication, says Boardman. In other words, nature really is healing in more ways than one. Her second uh, recommendation are hobbies. Ever heard of this tip? To help ease everyday stress, kickstart a hobby. Hobbies are probably the purest form of love, says Boardman. According to a study from Harvard Business School, the best intervention for people who felt stressed and burnt out at work was to learn a new activity. Not for the sake of climbing the corporate ladder, but for their own happiness. That's a really interesting. Mm. I'm enjoying my one tablespoon of lemon juice, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar diluted in about 12 ounces of water. Really good to wake you up in the morning. And it's very, I think it's healthy for you. So let's continue. That said, Boardman Boardman emphasizes the importance of doing something just for the love of the game. Find an activity that brings you joy and stick with it. Just don't turn it into a side hustle as that undermines the beauty of the hobby itself. But discover something you deem valuable for your own pleasure. But don't overdo it, like I talked about on other other videos about going for the dopamine too much. That's what puts you in a flow state where you lose the sense of time and that engagement is just a tremendous uplifter in your everyday life, says Boardman. Of that note, one final caveat. For it to qualify as a hobby, it can't be passive, says Boardman. There has to be that level of engagement. For example, scrolling through your social media feed does not count as a hobby, nor does watching sports on TV. And that's because you want to get your whole body involved. You want to get your body, your mind, body, and spirit. So you want to be really engaged in it. So I would agree with that. But you don't want to overdo a hobby, obviously get obsessed by it. Like, for instance, uh, marathon running is to me is it becomes obsessive i mean if you're going to do that know exactly what you're doing and for me i remember when i i ran a couple marathons way back when uh, many decades ago and it was really because it was a, it was a challenge to myself and i knew it was going to be limited i knew it wasn't particularly good for me um, it's better to, if you're going to have a hobby, not to be so fo- overly focused in one that requires you to keep upping and upping the ante, meaning upping the, and upping the pleasure that it gives you. Uh, look at my, my video, my broadcast about dopamine and video games, because that'll help you really understand how that dynamic works with pain and pleasure and how when we're seeking too much pleasure, that can actually lead to a long-term pain. Exercise is is, is tremendous and and, and one thing that I promote all the time and and walk the walk in this one because I I feel that this is is one that that releases normal uh, hormones in the body that are truly balanced and will really elevate our help ease the stress and get us in a, in a spot where we can deal with it much better. Seesawing to a more well-known stress reliever. Boardman is quick to reference the power of movement for mental health. I think we underestimate how important movement is, she explains. It doesn't have to be a strenuous activity. Research shows that just 30 minutes of treadmill walking for 10 consecutive days was associated with enhanced mood. Movement not only lifts you in the moment, but you have this longer-term boost from it, Boardman adds. If the thought of carving time in your busy schedule for the gym sounds, well, stressful in and of itself, you're not alone. Boardman suggests focusing on building more movement into your everyday rather than feeling like you have to go to the gym. You will feel just as good, and you're getting the mental and physical benefits of just moving more, she notes. Taking the stairs and not the escalator, just those little micro movements where, where you're not breaking a sweat actually have tremendous benefit. She has a point here, but I can tell you that just from my own experience, and, and this is personal, so it, it may not apply to you, but I find myself when I'm in a group setting, it, it pushes me more to actually, and it makes me look forward to it 
more than having to do it on my own, kind of a lone wolf or a lone exercise. And, and um, it, it, uh, if you can make your workout so it's engaging, so it's just not laborious and you're like, oh, I got to do the treadmill again or whatever. Uh, if, if you can vary it up, and, and, and do something and do different exercises that you like, you can carve out really just 15 to 30 minutes a day doing different exercises every day, and that will keep your, your whole body in shape. It will elevate your mind. It'll make you stronger, and it'll make you so you don't, re- don't ha- resent having to do it. I remember when I was training the marathon, it was very uh, monochromatic, if you will, or um, and... Uh, it was focused on just that. And I remember just not wanting to get up early in the morning to go running. It, it, I re, kind of resented it. I did it because I had that goal, but it, it wasn't something I, I completely looked forward to. But when I was training and running with others in a group, I really looked forward to it. It was fun. It was, it was something that was, wasn't uh, just so, so much of a, a, a dreadful routine. So it, you want to think about that also. Posture, okay, this is one interesting one. And uh, finally, uh, Dr. Boardman talks about uplifting your mood by standing up straight. Sound incredibly simple, but for some, it can make all the difference. We know from studies, if you hunch over and assume the position of looking at a phone, your mood may be a little bit sad versus walking happy, a happy walk with your shoulders back, your arms swinging, and a spring in your step those are immediate mood boosts. And it's true. I had a patient once who walked into my office and, and she was like this all the time, the head down, moping. And I, I asked her to stand up straight, put her back up against the wall. It's not just keeping your shoulders back. It's engaging them so they're moving away from your ears. So you're kind of pulling down your rhomboids. They're, those are the muscles in the back or your uh, lats. You know, those are the big muscles of the back. And you're standing up straight. You're like there's a string on your head pulling, pulling you up. Not stiffly, but standing up as though you're 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 100 feet tall and it really it opens a lot up and i would agree that that can elevate your mood when you practice that research does back it up one randomized controlled trial found that an upright seated posture in the face of stress was associated with higher self-esteem reduced negative mood and increased positive mood compared to a slumped posture Another study measured participants who were seated in a stooped, straight, or controlled posture while, posture while writing down their thoughts, and those with stooped postures had more negative thoughts overall. So what's the takeaway? To alleviate everyday stress, try Boardman's list of go-tos. They're rather low-lift, aka easy to implement in your daily life, but they have pretty profound benefits for mental health. So what are they again? Number one, getting outdoors, totally agree. Hobbies, yeah, get a hobby. Have some purpose in your life in a, in a way. Um, don't make your purpose just driven to your work or one thing. Try to uh, start a hobby, something you enjoy, and work that into your life. Exercise, can't underestimate the effect of that. I agree with that. And finally, posture, which is one that you may have not thought about, so I definitely endorse that. So try these, implement them into your life, and I think they'll help a lot. And until next time, I'm Dr. Charles, aka Coach MD, urging you to stay strong in mind, in body, and in soul. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel and share it with others. Until next time, bye for now. Hey, Dr. Charles, Coach MD, thanks for stopping by. Make sure to like and comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you think you have a friend who might benefit from this video, share it with them. For access to exclusive content, support my Patreon. There you'll get private access to videos, meditations, health tips, even relationship and financial tips. You'll have a say in what I produce and be able to participate in a monthly call with me. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you soon.